Hello everyone, my name is Yahya. I'm an infrastructure and security lead at Avisory, a startup running for aquaculture in Bandung, Indonesia. And I'm here to share uh, how HashiCorp stack, especially with Nomad console and Vault, helping to deploy the edge server on the ruler area to deliver data from the edge device with the cloud. So the fish farmer will have no problem at all to control the cultivation. Beforehand, I will introduce you with the Avisory. We are the aquaculture startup in Indonesia with the feeder machine as our main product. It helps farmer by evenly spreading the food fish around the pond, like a raindrop, to growing an aquaculture ecosystem. Our other business are to help the farmer economy and help them by giving the best price for them while we give cheap price for our ecosystem customer. We give our solution for the aquaculture sector as fish farmer, stream farmer, and supply chain. Also, while connecting with aquaculture, we can bring aquaculture as the primary source of animal protein in the world, hence the feed, feed the fish, and fit the world. Before we touch the technology part, I will share a story on how Avisory decided to make this machine. The problem and motivation comes from the pond fish farmer who have a problem with the fish cultivation. One of the main components of fish cultivation is the feeding fish. This is the longest space and is hard to maintain. Usually, farmers constantly spread the food around pond, control the weather, check up the fish hold, and rip it. Now, the problem from this cultivation pest is usually with feeder fish that actually couldn't spread evenly around the pond. This is causing some of the fish under or overly feeding. The uneaten feeder will be waste and contaminate the pond. This will cause fish to have a poor health, more dead fish, and farmers need to clean up the pond constantly. For every pond, usually farmer will waste around 25% bag full of feeder. It means farmer will waste around bag full of feeder for every four pounds. This will make a farmer to buy more feeder fish, but eventually it will be waste. As for the conclusion, the farmer have a struggle with feeding the fish. So I introduce you to this great machine we call feeder. This machine have a three main components. The tank that will be filled with all the fish food. The green box with an antenna called control box, or we call this the co box. And also the thrower that will make the feed spread like a raindrop. Now, maybe you will ask why it has to be like a raindrop. We follow the farmer behavior to spread the food, and their best way is by imitating the raindrop. With feeder, farmer can easily control the feeding automatically to control the quantity of feeding and scheduling. The best part is farmer can monitor the cultivation control by using an app. Now, if you imagine the pond location, it is usually in a rural area far from the stable internet connection. And the very first version of our edge computing was the offline first approach to get the device log and farmer cultivation. And here is how it works. Every morning, farmer have a schedule to spread feed around the pond, and they need to make sure the water quality and health condition of it is it underfed or sick. Farmer will put food into feeder, connect the phone into machine we call this cobox, through the wireless connection, and set up the machine configuration for faster spreading, so slower spread, or by scheduling. The machine uh, will running and store the data log locally at Cobox. The Cobox will send the data log into farmer's cell phone every time farmer has a connection with the Cobox. The data will be stored locally uh, with the farmer's cell phone. 
and farmer every day will connect to the internet within their house or come to the near city where have a connection to the internet and the data will be synced or distributed to our database. This offline first approach was a big help for us and makes a great impact around past year. Now, the problem is the data will be synced to our database within one to three days by the farmer. Uh, this means we need to improve our architecture by connecting uh, the IoT to our cloud to get faster result. First, I will show you about this control box, or we call this uh, co-box. This machine is set to feeder a machine to configure the set machine rotation and send the data log to farmer phone. This machine is actually built up uh, with ESP32 control, uh, supported with the Wi-Fi as our uh, wireless access point to connect with the farmer. So. Uh, this cobok has a big role in order to send the data within our cloud. You could see that uh, the farmer is easy to turn on the cobox by only click run and this cobox uh, will running, running and working with the uh, machine configuration. So most of our farmer come from the rural area where an internet connection might be impossible. So this is why come with the edge computing as needed with our uh, product. With edge computing, it's possible to gather data from a device that expected to be disconnect from our cloud. In this picture, you could see the edge device is where our IoT, IoT device is deployed. In order to solve the internet connectivity with edge device, we need them to store the old edge device data that, and they will communicate with cloud to forward the data. Now, if you imagine uh, the big scale of our architecture solution, here is how it look like. You could see this is how the farmer controlled the pond and how it looks like our feeder uh, deployed on the pond beside our uh, feeder. We have a quality sensor to directly measure constituent of interest in chemical like uh, dissolved oxygen, or PPH, uh, concentration, solids in the water, or sometimes to measure surrogates. There is another device uh, we call the smart lift net, where the vision intelligence to recognize stream feeding behavior and drought. We also have a feeding sensor attached to feeder machine, it is simply to prevent under or overly feeding and all everything data will be sent to the base station as our edge server and connect to the cloud. That is how it looks like in the pump. Uh, now let's deep dive to more detail about the architecture. Here is how it works. Uh, DH computing has an unreliable internet connection and is always expected to be disconnected from the cloud. We have many devices that will gather the data log and send through the Wi-Fi and forward it into Edge Server. In the future, we hope we can send our data with the LoRa Mesh and LoRa One. The Edge Server will receive and data, the data log from device and store into the MQTT broker or using API server. And after that, the device will check the connection to the internet and distribute the data. The Edge Server is using the Raspberry Pi 2 with the spec the uh, 900 megahertz quad-core ARM Cortex A7 CPU with the memory one gigabyte ROM. The Edge Server will receive uh, the data from device and forward the data. Uh, this Edge Server will be installed on uh, Nomad agent and console agent and connect to the cloud and communicate uh, with other private servers. Now, the role of the Nomad in the Edge Server is to deploy the needs of the device and easily control them without any need to visit the pond. Now, if you imagine how this could happen, whenever farmer have a need to deploy the feeder machine, we also install the best station included with our edge device and edge server. 
the operational people will deploy the ad server and install the basic needs of the ad server like nomad engine and in console agent and after that operational people will connect at the server with our private network and they will tell us if the ad server is already installed if the ad server is connected to our nomad cluster we will install the further net so this means Part of Nomad and console in our IoT deployment is to deploy the edge device dependencies, control which device is still active sending data, and update the edge server services. The point on the Nomad is to control the deployment of our MQTT server and our consumer. We have a consumer uh, we call Poverty. This service is to deploy uh, the ad server and check the connectivity to our cloud. Every edge device log have a hundred record rotation and it will be much better if we can keep the data as much as possible. So we met this poverty working like the offline first. So every data will be stored first locally in poverty and if they connect to the internet it will send the data. So, with this buffer C, we store the edge device log locally whenever offline. After that, it will sync and distribute the data when online. Um, this is how it looks like when one of our Raspberry Pi connected into our Nomad cluster. We are using the Raspberry Pi 2 connected to our cloud. Uh, you could see with the CPU usage, they always have a rigid connectivity and this is how our HTL script that will deploy it to our edge server you could see we deploy this with data center edge server continue with constraints only to server with no type edge server after that we using this thing host to make sure the job didn't run on the server that already running the same job and for task driver, we are only using the exec or executable. It's not container because we need to optimize the memory usage. So we just need to install the broker and our offline first service. Now let's thinking back in all that I explained. Memory usage is the most vital in our research. The lower usage of memory, it means the lower cost we need to spend with production. It will be much better if we can running our Nomad under ESP32, but that will be impossible right now. So let's talk about this memory usage. So far, console agent and Nomad engine only need 300 megabyte usage of the memory for the basic requirement. And after that, we install the basic need for edge serve device. One time we have a peak only reach CPU usage of 70% and memory usage 800 megabyte. So that's everything about IoT deployment. How we manage to use Nomad and console as our IoT deployment. Now let's talk more interesting topic about Nomad and console why we use this in the very first place. For a year, we had so many questions from people about how in the very first place you choose Nomad. If you guess about the edge computing, no, we didn't notice the edge computing will work with Nomad in the very first place. So we have a heated debate with container orchestration in the first place to build our SDLC. Everyone already tell us uh, to use Kubernetes. Every engineer in Hill already have a two year experience uh, with Kubernetes. Now let's see the main problem with Kubernetes that we can solve. It's memory leak. Some managed Kubernetes reserve the Kubelet like 700 megabit or 9% memory reserve for Kubelet. Even for the K3S or the Kube Edge, the usage of the agent itself is more than 300 megabyte. Also, Kubernetes have a lot of component we need uh, to understand, while Nomad agent only 180 megabyte and focus only with container orchestration. 
Now, let's talk about how in the very first place we choose HashiCorp stack. In order to choose the best tech stack, we need to choose the better investment for company. We have a kind of culture to make the technology well maintained and better for company. So we believe we need to have a universal and sustainable technology. We call this diagnostic tech stack approach, where we didn't depend on some vendor in order to run the technology. 2019, I just remember about watching the video where Atman Dadgar uh, telling about the Tao of Hasicorp as the foundation that guides vision roadmap and product design of the Hasicorp product. So we believe our technology approach have the same vision with the Tao Hasicorp. Now let's see what's the point. In order to make a sustainable tech, we need to use a simple, modular, and composable technology. Like Nomad is actually pretty simple. It is only a container orchestration with architecture uh, focus on orche container orchestrator. And it's pretty sustainable, where Nomad have a better failover feature and better at memory usage. Another with the Tau Hazicorp is to focus on the end goal and workflow, rather than underlying technologies and this actually defines Hasikop stack leads to a fundamentally technology agnostic view where, where, where technology used as a problem solving, not as uh, the, another tool with much better feature. While we are using Nomad and console as edge computing, we also use a fault as the edge deployment uh, configuration with focus on development experience and secret management. We a little bit different when using default. Our focus is to store the deployment configuration and restrict the use of secret text with plain text. All engineer need to configure uh, the secret variable and deployment configuration within this fold. You can see the first key, we have the CICD key as the deployment configuration, like domain of the service, data center location, container image, resource configuration, and so on. <coughs> Second, we have ENV key or application configuration file, where developer store the needs of the application. You could see some value of the key is must in order to hide the real value and only application can understand the original value and last uh, we have the metadata key to explain function of the application we didn't use default because this is the only secret management platform because it has better experience and support our universal needs of the secret the best thing, everyone can use this without deep understanding of the tools. Statistically, right now we are running with Hasikop stack with more than 200 deployments a day, 80 terabyte data transfer a month, more than 500 nomad jobs and 900 running containers. Lastly, with 100 server and 8 server with the total spec 1.2 terabyte and uh, 700 gigahertz. The spec is kind of small because sometimes we are running with the ad server. Maybe a lot of people will explain the advantage and the advantage with the Hasikorp stack. In here, we will explain uh, the benefit of investment with Hasikorp stack. First, we have the easy deployment because Hasikorp stack is a modular. Uh, we pretty easy to make people understand about our deployment. Second, is a faster mean to repair or MTTR. Nomad has a lot of failover feature like a blue-green deployment, canary deployment, versioning, and also rollback. This is the most helpful feature with the Nomad. Last, we could just simply install the Nomad agent and console agent everywhere. This is why we are actually working with the edge computing. One time we use our personal computer 
in order to solving a resource problem and it only took 10 minutes to spawn. So for a whole 20 months use of the Nomad console agent and also default, we have something actually didn't work with us. Everyone know that in Kubernetes have a helm and it's pretty helpful. In Nomad actually uh, they have the Nomad pack and we hope that we'll be waiting for the public release. And sometimes CSI plugin is crash and weirdly is the instance is also crash. And lastly, everyone knows sometimes the documentation is kind of hard to understand. All right, everything I share is only the tip of iceberg of our edge computing. And we would love to share this more within the next year about our edge computing. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Hatur nuhun.